So a lot of people have asked me about veganism and vegetarianism and what I think about killing animals for food. Um, also since I mentioned that my husband Chris hunts and fishes. And folks were wondering how this squares with respect for life and living in peace. So I'm gonna try to answer that in this video. So from what I understand, um, veganism is living in such a way so as not to exploit animals for food or clothing or any other purpose, and certainly not to be cruel towards them. And that's something that I completely agree with, even though I myself am not vegan. I think it's wrong, for example, to kill an exotic animal for its fur when you could keep just as warm with like a normal coat. I also have a big problem with animals being raised for meat in cruel conditions, like in factory farms where animals are confined in crowded and filthy conditions. Actually, on a side note here, um, when I was in high school, I took a class where we watched a lot of um, Michael Moore films about like factory farming and stuff. And then also in high school, a friend of mine did a whole like photo essay or um, photo sort of project on um, factory farming and he used people as his subjects instead of animals so it kind of um, made a pretty big point there. So back to the video um, and my thoughts. At what point does it become okay to eat meat? Well at a starting point I think it's really important to have reverence for all life as it was created by God. When I was little my parents taught me and my brothers and sisters to appreciate the beauty of the wildlife around us. So like the deer in the woods behind our house or a monarch coming out of a chrysalis. Um, that's something we watched every late summer for as long as I can remember. Um, and the occasional bald eagle that flew over hundreds of feet above us and everybody would run inside and grab their binoculars. And of course it followed naturally that any cruelty toward these creatures was wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't mean <laughs> swatting mosquitoes because I'm afraid I really don't have a problem with swatting mosquito. <laughs> um, in one of my earlier videos, I mentioned my art teacher, Rose V. Um, so I'm gonna do that again here because she made a really big impression on me. Rose V, um, as well as teaching art, she taught social studies to the fifth and sixth graders um, for years in the Woodcrest School which is where I went to school from first grade through eighth grade. So one of Rosebeet's favorite teaching units was on the Native Americans um, in the Americas here. And I remember her telling my class about how the Native Americans had such great respect for animals that they would ask permission of the animal spirit before they hunted it for food. Um, they also didn't waste any part of the animal after they killed it. So. Um, I just have this one like vivid memory of Rosby um, telling us how they would make sewing needles out of fish bones. And I always said that, thought that that was like super amazing and I tried it once, but it did not work out at all. <laughs> like I'll just stick with those metal ones. <laughs> Anyhow, the point is that the Native Americans depended on animals as a source of food, but they also had reverence for them. So I do think it's possible to do both. Um, of course, I live in a Christian community, so there's always the Bible to go to when I'm looking for an answer on something. Um, I'm certainly not a biblical scholar, and I'm sure anyone who is could find something to contradict me, um, but there are some stories throughout the Bible of people eating meat, um, from the Israelites eating quail in the desert um, to the lamb eaten at Passover. And I've also especially loved the one that takes place after Jesus' resurrection where a few of the disciples um, went fishing and they weren't catching anything. And then Jesus called to them to, from the shore to throw their nets onto the other side of the boat. Um, and then when they did that, they couldn't pull in the net because there were so many fish. And then when they came to shore, there was a fire uh, with like burning coals and stuff and had fish on it. And Jesus told them to come have breakfast. And I just think that's a really beautiful story. But after saying all of that, I don't think it's wrong to kill animals for food. I think I said that already. <laughs> yes, it's not wrong to kill animals for food. Um, here at the Bruderhof, meat is like a big part of our diet. Well, not too big, but it's part of our diet. And so are dairy products. Like, sorry, but I just can't leave my ice cream. Just gotta have my ice cream. <laughs> 
but part of our communal meals, when we do have them, which is unfortunately not happening right now, thanks to COVID, um, but when we have these communal meals, and also when we pray here in our house, or when we eat here in our house, we do a short prayer of thanksgiving at the beginning of the meal, and that includes thanks for the food, because it just is good to remember where it comes from. It would also probably be a bit of a challenge to be vegan at the Bruderhof. I'm not a, really aware of anyone who is. I do know people who a, avoid meat just for health reasons, but that definitely shouldn't stop anyone from joining. And I know plenty of people who are vegan who have visited. I do think there's a danger in thinking too much about what we eat. And I'm not saying that to diminish concerns um, about exploiting animals but I mean being more concerned about my diet and health than with looking out for the people around me. Anyway, once again, I respect people who don't eat meat for reasons of conscience, and I hope that I've managed to explain my position on this to you in a way that makes sense. <laughs>